Please be seated. This is the feast of the greatest solidarity. A fundamentally joyful day that takes note of historical suffering, but within the overarching theme that the last word belongs to divine love. Feminist theologian Elizabeth Johnson, in her book, Friends of God and Prophets, a Feminist Reading of the Communion of Saints, elaborates on this doctrine of the communion of saints, and she declericalizes it and democratizes it and puts it in the center of Christian theology. Feast, the greatest solidarity. Solidarity is a wonderful word that means unity and identification, fellowship, and there's nothing solid about the solidity, the solidarity of All Saints Day. For this communion of saints is more like a fabric or a weaving or a knitting of a net that holds the saints together. <coughs> it's mentioned in our call that thou hast knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship. These are fibers that are looped together so that they are unbreakable or woven together back and forth so that they're strong, variegated, and flexible. This communion of saints holds us up and it expresses our boundedness with one another. God is the weaver of the world. God is the one who knits us together in our mother's womb. And God is the one who binds us together in holy and tender ties. This fabric we can think of as a hammock holding the earth or a canopy overspreading the heavens. This is a fundamentally joyful day because we are held up in this net of the communion of saints. We are bound together and we don't have to muster up all that faith, hope, love, energy, and courage by ourselves for this buoyant net lifts us up and helps us all the time. Because not only are we praying and honoring the saints, but the saints are praying and lifting us up. This feast takes note of historical suffering. First, that intense and bloody suffering of the martyrs who died for the faith and whose blood generated and renewed and grew the faith of others. And this is the historical suffering of all those who lost their lives in violence and hatred. This is the suffering of those kids at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. And those worshipers at the Tree of Life Synagogue. And those who were praying at Mother Emanuel AME Church. It is that historical suffering, and it is our ordinary suffering when we weep for those we love who have died, like Mary and Martha wept for their brother Lazarus. And we mark this historical suffering in our own pain. And we affirm and know that this suffering is healed and is held in God's loving care. For this is a feast with the overarching theme.
believe that the last word belongs to divine love. God wove the heavens and the earth out of love. God knit us together in one body of Christ. God washed us in baptism and submerged us in the water and brought us out into the light and raised Jesus from the dead and said that love is stronger than death. This divine love we know in this feast of solidarity of the communion of saints this we know that no height or depth or angels or principalities or powers or mountain high enough or valley low enough or river wide enough can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. These magical three days as October turns to November, so holy, so powerful, so thin, that line between the living and the dead. And this, these sacred days mean for us our Easter in November. Three days celebrating our connection, our communion, life, and love. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.